Hello everyone, so a friend of mine asked me to help him draw an orbital diagram so that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. I'm basically just going to be drawing or converting essentially a uh, molecular formula or some type of skeletal structure into an orbital diagram. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the basics of orbital diagrams. Um, I'm going to have a separate video for that where I talk about sigma bonds and pi bonds and how do we uh, sort of depict them in a different way than Lewis diagrams or structural or skeletal structures. Okay, so the First thing that you'll probably have is either a molecular formula, which is what I have. So my friend gave me CH3, CO, N, H2. So the first thing that when you uh, are looking at this, you, you kind of first to have an have to have an idea of what it's going to look like, uh, obviously. So when you see this, this is usually an amide. So CO and H2, it's a pretty common depiction of an amide. There are no uh, substitutions on the nitrogen. So what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is draw the structure in a skeletal form. I think starting out that's probably a good way to go about this. Okay, so uh, I'll do H3C. So this is basically this, the methyl group just reversed. It's a common way to draw this. Um, and then C, which is the carbonyl, its electrons and then NH2 to form the nitrogen component of the amide. So this would be the amide functional group. Okay, so now we're going to convert this into the orbital diagram, which is the important part of this video. So basically what, how I started with the carbons, or I'd sort of say the more like the, the backbone of the structure. So, I, and I changed that from carbons in this case because there's there are carbon and then there's also nitrogen so but it does help to draw the carbon first okay so I'm going to draw the carbons and I'm going to draw this nitrogen on here because I know that those kind of are the 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 foundation of this structure if you will and then the next thing I'm going to do is change the brush so I can draw this better okay so I'm going to draw the easiest part which are the hydrogens so you have to know that it's a sigma bond and sigma bonds somewhat look, they look sort of like this. And then the H is just going to go in here. And then that represents the, the spin of the two uh, electrons within the sigma bond. And then I'm going to do that for the other bond to this hydrogen out here. And normally you would draw them in here, but it's really hard to do that with the pin. So I guess if you're doing this on an exam or something, normally draw them in there. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so those are the hydrogens that make up the methyl group. That's really terrible. That's supposed to be an H. And now I'm going to do the sigma bond from this carbon to the sigma bond of the center carbon. Okay, and then its electrons there in the middle. And now I'm going to think, I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say, okay, I know that there's a double bond here. A double bond is made up of a sigma bond and a pi bond. And then this is just a single bond here. So and it's just made up of a, a sigma bond. So I'm just going to do that first because it's the simplest. So I'm going to draw the sigma bond between the nitrogen and the carbon. And that's the up and down spin. And then just like I did here with, with, these, with these hydrogens, I'm going to do the same with the nitrogen. So I'll draw the bond from the nitrogen contributing to this sigma bond. And uh, from over to here of the other hydrogen. And if you're wondering why there's just a circle here and not another sort of half of this sigma bond for the H, I'll talk about that in the basic video not necessarily important for this video. Okay, and then the other important thing is are the lone pairs. So how do we depict them? We basically, for all intents and purposes, view them as just a simple sigma bond because they behave chemically as a sort of a sigma bond, how the electrons behave just as if they were in a, a sigma bond. So you just draw them and then those are the, that's the lone pair and sort of this uh, non, sort of like an empty hydrogen, I guess you can think of it like that. There are just electrons there. Okay, so now the hardest part is going to be depicting the double bond between the C, between the carbon and the oxygen. So we're, we now want to draw the carbonyl. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the sigma bond. 
because of course there's still a sigma bond attaching carbon and oxygen. And I'm going to draw oxygen up here. And then I'm going to switch colors because that could probably be confusing. And I'm going to draw this sigma bond here. And I'll draw in the electrons there. Uh, and now I'm going to do the lone pairs for the oxygen. We're going to do that just like we did on the nitrogen. Fairly simple. And again, uh, the way I'm drawing this, so sort of the three-dimensional uh, uh, geography, or if you will, um, is that the bonds would be repulsed out here, so the electrons repel each other, right? So they would be forced into this sort of 3D shape. So it is important to sort of depict things like this um, with the lone pairs out here, so a maximum distance away from each other. And then I already have this here, and so the only thing I have left is the pi bond of this double bond. And so how we do that is, of course, you need to know that uh, pi bonds are made up of a p bond, uh, I'm, yeah, um, as well as a sigma bond. So how do we draw a p bond? So this, we have to draw this p orbital. I'm sorry, not a p bond, a pi bond. So we need two p orbitals for that. So we put a p orbital on the oxygen, and we put a p orbital on the carbon. And we're simply just going to sort of draw this representation, if you will, that they're somehow connected. And then we're going to fill in, in one of the orbitals, an up arrow, and then a down arrow in the other one to represent the up spin in one of the orbitals and the down spin in the other orbital. So you don't put them in the same orbital because uh, you never have two electrons like this within the same p orbital of a pi bond. So you always represent them uh, apart from each other. So of course, uh, I'm done, but whenever you're done with a problem, or whenever you're doing anything, I guess, in life, good life lesson here is to double check your work. So uh, how I'm going to double check my work is I'm going to say, okay, I know that each uh, atom here has to have four bonds, right? I can't have more than four bonds. That's uh, almost theoretically impossible. I don't want less than three bonds because we don't have any plus charges here. This is a neutral molecule. So I'm going to look at each one. I'm going to go, I'm going to say, okay, there's a sigma bond here, a sigma bond here, a sigma bond here, and a sigma bond here. So there are four bonds on this carbon, and it's therefore sp3. So I'm kind of good. I'm done there. Uh, I'm going to go to this central carbon here. I'm going to say there's a uh, sigma bond here. I already notated that one here. There's a sigma bond here, and then there's the pi bond here, right? So I have one sigma, two sigma, three sigma, and then a pi bond. So those are four bonds, and then that would be sp2 on the central carbon. So that's sort of good. Okay, I got, I'm just looking for the four bonds. And then I'm going to go to the nitrogen. I'm going to look and say, okay, so I have the sigma bond here in the middle connecting nitrogen to carbon. I have the sigma bond between nitrogen and hydrogen. I have the electrons represented, so that's a sigma bond. I'm going to say the lone pair looks good, that's a sigma bond, and then the other one, the other nitrogen-hydrogen bond is a sigma bond. So one, two, three, four sigma bonds, sp3. Um, you can say that this is somewhat theoretical, so if you're just beginning, you don't necessarily have to think about this too much, but this lone pair here can contribute to the molecular orbital structure of the carbonyl. So you can say this is sp3. It's also somewhat sp2. It's going to be a somewhat hybrid characteristic uh, of that. So that's up to you, up to your professor, how they handle that. I'm not sure. Uh, that varies case to case. So I'm going to say that that's done. I hope this uh, wasn't too quick. Uh, if it was, no big deal. I would prefer, I would really hope that you guys send me uh, some more structure, some more molecular formulas that perhaps I could do. So just send me an email or write in, in the comments uh, a potential molecular formula. If you've done it, I'll do it, no big deal, and you can check your work against mine. If you have any comments, please leave them uh, in the comment section below or feel free to email me with any homework problems. I'll help you out. Uh, so I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching.